Welcome to Side Hustle with Personality. I'm Kerry Ruff, and in this podcast, we help you understand, leverage, and capitalize on your untapped skills and interests, leading to more income and fulfillment. During each episode, we interview successful business people, artists, and everyday folk who have, in unique and clever ways, taken their passions and turned them into money-making opportunities. Now, today, I am thrilled to have someone with quite a track record in building businesses, someone who knows how to leverage his personality. Joining me is Mr. Andre Taylor, a brilliant entrepreneur, expert, and consultant on the business of luxury. Now, you may have seen Andre on his popular YouTube channel or know him from his longtime on-air appearances as an ABC contributor. He's the author of numerous books and learning programs and founder of Taylor Insight Worldwide, a consultancy based in New York, where he works with luxury brands, well-known and not so well-known. Andre found his way into luxury 20 years ago when he realized how market factors were converging to create a new class of luxury buyer, as well as new brands emerging in various categories. He began writing, speaking, and consulting on the subject of luxury and his video, Selling Luxury, The 21 Essentials became the foundation of a thriving advisory practice. But that's not all. Andre originally began his career on Wall Street and also found a company that was the first to stream videos for professional sports teams. He has done a lot in his career, and I am so delighted to have Andre on the show today to share his thoughts on side hustles, personality, and business building. Andre, welcome to the show. Gary, thank you so much for having me. And uh, thank you for that enthusiastic introduction. Yeah, of course. I, you know, you and I met uh, approximately uh, 15 years ago when I read about you in a business magazine, I invited you to come and speak at our college here in New York where I was a professor. And you did something that I talk about for years. You immediately began consulting with me about how to make what I was going to do even better. That has always intrigued me. Why did you do that? <laughs> well, uh, Carrie, first of all, I'm so glad you remember that. And most of all, that you even notice, you know, some people don't even notice these days when something like that is happening. You know, we're talking about talking about connections, Carrie. And, and I, I learned early on in my life that the best way to build human connection is to have a genuine interest in what others do and try to help them. I've often in my life uh, just gone, uh, gone to work right away for potential clients. And my view has always been what better way to learn how to help them and you know, get past this question of whether you're hired or not, which, which stumps so many people when they're in business. Now, in your case, I think what I wanted to do was just create a better organization, a better event where I could come and speak. When we were talking, I thought naturally, let me share with, with Carrie how to organize this event, how to get buy-in, how to sell me internally. And that's been my, in some ways, my secret weapon uh, in the speaking profession. I remember that you remember Ed Bradley, long time, you know, few minute correspondent, you know, over at CBS. Of course. Of course. 
Yeah, I, re I remember hearing him talk about how he broke into media. He described it as hanging around <laughs> a Philadelphia radio. Actually, you're from Pennsylvania, Philadelphia radio station. And he soon yes. got this opportunity. Uh, have, you, have you heard the story before? Oh, no, no, I haven't. Yeah, he, he said he was hanging around a radio station and he soon got this opportunity to read the news just by, you know, just hanging around, wanting to be there, trying to, to make himself useful, trying to figure out how he could get into media. And he made himself so good that he became their newsman. His career progressed from that. So that's, that has been my pattern, volunteering, showing up, giving more. And I'll tell you, when you do that, you set a standard that is very difficult to compete with. Let me also tell you this, because this just came to mind. I worked at this company. I was in the accounting and billing department, but I wanted to be in sales. So I hung out in the sales department. I got to know the head of the division. I volunteered to help with projects. And soon when the, when the fellow who was running that division had an opening, he asked me if I wanted a job. And I said, yes. And soon when he got more responsibility in that department to manage, he promoted me. So not only did I wind up in sales, but in a short time, I was the vice president of sales and marketing. And I was about 25. I had just read about you. So, uh, a friend of mine had said, hey, you need to read about this entrepreneur. And then when I contacted you and invited you to speak, at this event, you just didn't say, no, can't make it, whatever, whatever reason. But you sent back this list of things to do. Look, I couldn't have given you uh, more work as far as you know, a big salary or anything or promote you. Some people would say, that's an awful lot of work for really nothing. A smaller venue at that time. They would say, why did you spend so much time? <laughs> you did that. You send me this list of who to contact, what news organizations to contact, who sh I should have on my team to put this, this, this event together. D do you do that all the time? This is the trick. People are always wondering, how do I break in? How do I get an opportunity? And they're fixated on their, their resume, their background, their this and that. And most people complain about extra work. And in the past, they would complain about unpaid internships so much to the point that a lot of companies don't even offer them anymore. But these are opportunities. These are foots in the door. And the, the thing to realize is that you can create your own openings. Not only that, you can create the opening and you can make it a great opening by consulting with whoever has a need to make what they're doing better. I tell people all the time, get to work, start helping others with their mission. And even if the payoff isn't where you are at that time, you'll earn the payoff of great experience. I've listened to you, your YouTube channel and you know, everywhere and over the years. And I've learned that you started your career as an entrepreneur, as a side hustle. Tell me about that. Well, first of all, let me thank you for being a long time a listener and supporter. It's right. Over the last 15 years, you've come to events. You've done so much in my corner to let people know that you value what I have to say. So I appreciate that. But Carrie, I can tell you that I cannot remember a time when I did not want to be an entrepreneur. I think we get signs early in life about where we'll excel. And I certainly got mine. I was thumbing through books in my house in Brooklyn one rainy day as a kid. And I saw inside a book, or maybe it was a magazine, the people with the highest income were entrepreneurs or top salespeople. And I said, well, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I was about eight years old. And I immediately started thinking about what I could sell. So I, I looked around, I looked at the back of a comic book. And back then there used to be these ads about selling various things. And I saw this ad about selling garden seeds. And I sent away 
for a starter kit. I remember coming home every day from school, eager, is it there, is it there? I got that thing and I started selling those seeds door to door. And you know that was my first side hustle. By the way, there's lots of lessons there in what you have laying around the house when you have kids and how they spend their time. But anyway, a few years later, as a teen, I became really intrigued again about what I could do using the mail. People may not realize this today, but when I was a kid growing up through my teens, mail order <laughs> was promoted like becoming an internet millionaire is today. That's the way they used to promote it in the 70s. So I created this business selling my own books. And I conceived them, I wrote them, I sold them in these little these little ads in the tabloids. And in fact, I recently found my first product from, I think it was 1978. And, you know, I'm going to revise it and reissue it because it's, it's interesting. But anyway, a few years after that, I wound up working on Wall Street by way of, uh, frankly, urgent circumstances and uh, a great personal connection. And I continued this whole side hustle approach. And I began developing weekend seminars for businesses that wanted to train in customer service. I guess my last side hustle before becoming a full-time entrepreneur was starting part-time the media and technology business that I developed with a partner, which first was about helping these sports teams manage their game video operations. But later we evolved into consumer applications, uh, developing these specialized brands, websites for sports fans with common interests like urban sports, women's sports. Earlier I mentioned you grew into a multi-million dollar enterprise. That's what I call a side hustle growing up. That's what we did. It was called interactive sports. And we even started to look at categories like affluent business travelers that wanted specialized sports feeds, which is, which is how I wound up, by the way, you know, the luxury business very carefully. What advice would you give to others who want to do the same, have a side hustle and, and that grows up. Maybe not necessarily a multi-million dollar, but what's your advice? I would, first of all, I wouldn't rule out the idea of building a multi-million dollar enterprise. In fact, today it's it's probably more achievable than ever before. But to grow a business, you need courage. You need knowledge about what works, you need the skill to execute, and you need emotional intelligence so that you can manage through what's taking place each day. You also can grow a business without marketing and sales talent. So if you're out there saying, I don't like selling, I don't like marketing, find something else to do. Being an entrepreneur is not for you. Perhaps to really hone into your question, I would say the most important advice is learning to replace your consumer mindset and develop real business savvy, you know, real business savvy mindset. You want to understand what consumers, customers and clients want, but you've got to think like a moneymaker, which that can take some time for some people. Now, the good news is there's more documented and synthesized information about starting a business and building a business than ever before. It wasn't like that when I got going. In fact, people barely knew what an entrepreneur was, but today it's on TV. There's Shark Tank. There's these countless online courses and coaches everywhere and business competitions and programs and YouTube videos, as you mentioned. But none of that really replaces the real world experience and grit that you get in really doing it. It's all theoretical until you have to eat and live by doing it. And you don't have a chance if you do not consciously and deliberately develop an understanding of how a successful business person thinks. Where do you find that information? Where, where is that uh, other than doing it falling on your face and then doing it again. Some people say, I want to start a restaurant and cook great meals. I want to have a men's club. I want to make beautiful dresses. I want to have my own recording studio. I want to 
bake delicious cakes. This is all nice, but you need a client. You need a client today, you need a client tomorrow, and you need one the next day. So until you understand that you are creating a machine that daily attracts services and keeps clients, it's all fantasy and it's an expensive one. So as you look at all the information that's around, remember, it's about actually doing it and every day realizing that this is about making money. So true. What would you say is the biggest barrier would be entrepreneurs face in growing a side hustle into a real business? What's the biggest barriers? Well, mindset is first, I would say. It can take years to learn what the right questions are. You know, I mentioned mindset earlier, and that's really a lifelong adjustment. You can think you've got a good business head on you because you want to be in business, because you've taken a few steps. But there are other things about your mindset that can prevent you from maximizing your success in business. I see it every day with the people I speak with, the people I correspond with. You know, think about this for a moment. Right now at Amazon, at Apple, at Microsoft, you name it, there are meetings going on. People are meeting and the mindset around a particular business problem is being discussed, it's being challenged, it's being reset. So if these companies have to do it, imagine how important it is for you to do it when you have none of their capital and their market standing. The other thing I would say about this is that when you're actually doing it, there are things that you can see like that you don't see when you're talking about it in the abstract. When I was growing my sports media company, the mindset in the dot-com era back then was how much money have you raised? I understood the VC game a bit because I had read about it and studied it. And my focus was not on pursuing VCs, but building a viable company and figuring out how I could find alternate ways of funding growth that would be revenue as opposed to vulture investment, you know? Right. So I was knocking on doors of companies that, that would be clients. And I found a few that really bought into what we were doing, you know, our different propositions. That's how we became cash flow positive. The other thing I would say to you, even after years, I would guess I would describe it as business maturity. You know, you think marketing is just social media. You have no email address on your YouTube channel. You have no street address on your Shopify site. You have no clear description of who you are and what you do. You don't follow up with people who bought from you. These are small signs that you don't understand what being in business is about. Now, that sounds like such little things in which to do that grows your business, but we don't think about very often. We skip over, try to go for the, the, the home run. You're hitting on something here because you need a real business advisor. This is why a lot of businesses really struggle. You've got all these issues that you're dealing with, your own emotions, your own understanding of what business is about. But you've got to get around and into a real group of marketers, deal makers, and business people. And it's probably not the guy or gal in the 20s who are showing up in your feed on Facebook who can show you a trick or two. Spend some real money on guidance from someone with lots of experience, someone with years in, and they will say something that sounds like a throwaway line, but it will be this big idea that you really need that you might not even understand when you hear it, but the essence of it will make you successful. You know, as an example, Jake Burton Carpenter, a businessman who he actually passed away a couple of years ago. He's probably best known as a snowboarder. He told my business partner when we were getting going, focus on one sport. And I'll tell you, Carrie, if we had listened and truly gotten the power in those four words, we would have gotten much farther faster. I love this. That's, you can be goosebumps here. So many people in side hustle with personality community are saying, 
I do this, this, and this, and this. This particular entrepreneur, one of the best, said, focus just on one sport. What he was saying was really a lesson in focus. It's not the academic discussion of need a niche or the academic discussion of do this or that. It's the business wisdom that you cannot always understand because you don't have a framework. And someone is explaining something to you that sounds simplistic. It sounds like you got it, but you don't have it because you don't understand the weight behind that recommendation. Every day I talk to entrepreneurs and I'll tell them something and they think because they understand it intellectually, they've got it, but they don't have it because they don't understand that it's a big idea we're talking about. We were focused on many sports going in many different directions. And he looked at what we were doing and said, yes, you see opportunity in all those things, but you can't do that right now. You've got to do one thing at a time because you do not understand the magnitude and the depth of doing that one thing and the resources, all the things that you're going to have to draw on to do that. So again, my point here is wisdom. When someone who has been around tells you focus in this area, do this or don't do this or call that person back, reconnect with that person. There's something behind that that is often not, someone cannot comprehend the depth of what they're being told. Now I, I want to talk about using the asset of personality and personal connection as you grow. How has that played out for you? Well, first of all, I love business and I always have. I don't think about what I do as working. You know, I like success teaching and personal development. I like marketing and sales. I love high end products and services. And I approach what I do like a musician approaches his craft. And, and by the way, I am a musician, I play the piano. So oh. I'm constantly picking up my instrument, so to speak, which is business building, using those three areas. And I'm constantly looking at how I can do that better. And I think another aspect of my personality is a bit of obsession, which I will, <laughs> which I will, <laughs> I will, I, I will admit. And that obsession is in seeing what I can do with my instrument. You need stamina in business to keep testing, to keep refining, to keep moving forward. And it's very hard for some people to consistently take action and keep their mind in the right place. Often what they're doing is they're looking for that one thing that they can do that's like magic. But what I've learned long ago is you've got to practice this instrument every day and keep experimenting with what it can do for you. So I think that aligns with my personality. Are there things about your personality that have made entrepreneurship easier or harder for you? Um, how I look at what I do has certainly made it easier in that none of this feels like work. I'm also full of curiosity. So I'm always reading something. You know, I've got, I've got so many books around me all the time in every room, everywhere you go, magazines. I'm always watching a documentary. I'm always listening to an interview. I'm always engaged in conversation about how something works. So I'm a student of living and business, and I'm always looking to uncover nuances and personal and business growth. Now, what has at times made it harder is being a little too comfortable in the tough situations of life. Now, maybe that's been my blessing, but I was having dinner once with someone and he was talking with me about business and he was looking at me and he was, and he was talking almost like I was born in this multi-million dollar business. And I said, look, 
don't let my Oxford a accent fool you. <laughs> I've had <laughs> I've had plenty of difficulty. You know, I I just learned how to look at it and manage through it differently than most. In fact, I wrote this whole book about real resilience, which I know you know about. Yeah. You, know, Cole, you can oh, yeah. you can you can still win. Still but, win. But, but here's the rundown when I talk about tough situations. My father died early in my life when I was four. My mother and grandmother worked like hell to raise me, my brother and sister. In high school, I worked midnight to eight in the morning for four years. I couldn't graduate with my class. I had to take these additional classes, which was really a challenge for me. Uh, I once lost everything in a fire. I got breaks and I wound up on Wall Street, but I had to work like hell through disadvantage of youth, not having that wisdom yet, politics, racism. I started a business with no money and we scratched and clawed away to, to win business. Ooh. And we had well-funded competitors even copy us and we had to outfox them. I had big deals that fell apart. And frankly, I've had to regroup and start again and start again and start again. So maybe all of this study about success and business really fortified me and gave me the maturity to do what I do now and to really be grounded about it. Well, talking about, you know, we have to regroup. Let's talk about the last year. We are emerging out of what it is now, but COVID-19 has resulted in many people dealing with isolation, loneliness, doubt, and in your view, how has that impacted personal connection? It has certainly been a trying time. And if you don't better appreciate life now, there's something wrong. <laughs> if you don't better appreciate family and friends, there's something wrong. If you don't value your ideas and understand how important it is to go for it, there's something wrong. COVID-19 should make you more responsive to others, more interested in communicating with others. And if you're in business, it should make you more serious about forming deeper relationships with your clients and those that you work with. Getting back to side hustle, after your sports company, you started another company and developed into an expert in the field, luxury where many folks start part-time, like interior designing or fashion designer. What recommendations do you have for someone trying to launch and build a high-end brand? Well, first, uh, first a commercial. <laughs> you should get, acquaint get, get acquainted with my YouTube channel where you'll, you'll find the single largest source of the most videos on luxury business building, and that's at youtube.com forward slash Taylor Insight, T-A-Y-L-O-R-I-N-S-A-S-I-G-H-T. And then you should get into one of my membership programs. But let me give you a few things here. The first thing you should do is you should write down specifically, which means you've got to think about this, what makes you a high-end brand. And don't think it's price. Don't think it's your cool Instagram photos. What makes you high-end in detail? A lot of folks who want to be in luxury don't understand that and they haven't articulated that. Next, who cares about what you're offering? Is it women? Is it men? What's their need for this? What's their state of mind? What's their attitude? What's their vibe? What's their persona? Are they... Williamsburg, Brooklyn, are they Upper East Side? Are they Malibu, uh, California in the attitude? And then how will you, in your marketing, educate them about your brand? And at the same time, give them an offer to try your brand. As I said earlier, marketing and selling is paramount to your success. And what you're doing in marketing is really alerting someone who may not know what you have to offer satisfies their needs. So you've got to figure out how to articulate that in many different ways and make that come across. The other thing is how will you capture and follow up with every human being that shows interest in your brand? This is something that 
we learned at Interactive Sports, and it has been a foundation of everything I do. That's personal must, connection. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah. Well, not 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 just personal connection, personal relationship. Connection. So it's about yeah. so it's about having a relationship yes. that results in you having the data, you understanding who they are, and how will you continue to educate them? Show that you're a brand that fulfills a need and and continuing to make them offers. In a nutshell, this is what an entrepreneurial luxury business does. And remember this, the luxury business is filled with brands built 100 years ago. What you must do is different than what they do. You have to understand how to interact, sell, market in a more integrated way. Also, look, you need visibility. Some people, one of the things they do right away is they try to position themselves as, look at me, I started this, that, and the other. Be careful about taking a bow too quickly. Learn the fundamentals of marketing, direct your efforts to the client, and also not just on social media. Become a well-rounded business person. Andre, I, I could talk to you all day, and I don't want to take up any, any more of your time. I just want to get your thoughts on this. This is a question that I ask all my guests, and it's this. What use of your personality or connections has resulted in the most financial return for you? Oh, that's a good one. Well, there's no question it's communication skill. I've worked at it since I was a kid. I've continued to work at it over the years, writing, speaking interacting, follow up, understanding how to do that in many different situations. And and frankly, that's where I spend my time mostly in business building and the client work that I do. I'd also say it's critical thinking about any given business moment. Where is the benefit here for the client and where's the benefit for myself? Where's the revenue here? How do I make this a better moment? for the client and for my company. You know, then there's this this idea of belief and confidence. A lot of people will say that faith and hope is not a strategy, but I believe strongly that having a vision, believing in that vision, nourishing that vision, and a willingness to continue moving forward on that vision, believing in it no matter what, is really crucial. So I would say those are the those are probably the key elements in my personality and my ability to forge connections that have been most financially rewarding for me. Woo! Andre, you have offered quite an array of support to those focused on building high-end brands and businesses. Can you tell my side hustle with personality audience, where they can learn more about your books, courses, and consulting. Once again, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's my it, the, first time, the first time was too too fast. Probably the best place to go would be my website, AndreTaylor.com, A-N-D-R-E-T-A-Y-L-O-R.com. It's where you can connect with me. You can learn about my latest offerings. Visit AndreTaylor.com, and and I've got resources there that you can tap into. And send me a message. Let me know that you heard me on the Side Hustle with Personality podcast. Say hello, and let's explore what we can do together. Andre, thank you so very much. You have been an outstanding guest. I have learned so much, not only your hit on your YouTube channel and and reading all of your works and your books. I say your books, uh, You Can Still Win is my one of my favorite books of all time. I, I learned so much during this interview. So I thank you for joining me on Side Hustle with Personality. Uh, thank you so much. Kerry, I've really enjoyed being with you today. Grand success to you and your listeners. Thank you. And thanks to all of my listeners. Join me next time for another conversation on Side Hustle with Personality, where we explore how you can develop something on the side 
and bring great value to others and yourself.